In this video, we are going to look at a general overview of our muscles. We're going to look at the main functions and how they are structured. So we'll look at how a muscle is broken down into different bundles until we get down to the structures of a muscle cell. So if we look at the functions first, I think the most obvious one is that it makes our bones move, right? So muscles connect to our bones through connective tissue structures called tendons. Ligaments are structures that connect bone to bone. So your muscles make your skeleton move, and this is how we can walk and type and do things. But muscles also play a role in our posture. Muscles can be slightly contracted without actually causing movement. So just sitting, sitting very still, you have to contract muscles to hold your head up, right? And to keep your body in a certain position. Muscles also allow our internal organs to move. So think about digesting food. Okay, so when once we swallow the food, it has to go down the esophagus and there's muscles in there that push the food through until it gets to our stomach. Then the stomach has to contract and mush the food and it has to pass through the small intestine. Muscles help to regulate blood flow. So the smooth muscles that help our digestive system, there are smooth muscles also in the walls of our blood vessels. So blood vessels can constrict or dilate so that different body parts can get the right amount of blood flow depending on their metabolic requirements. And then lastly, our muscles produce heat. So our muscles make a huge amount of energy. We use a lot of ATP to make all of those muscle fibers contract. Whenever we make ATP, the byproduct is heat. So our whole body's way of thermoregulating is because we can produce heat when we produce ATP. And this is why when you're cold, you shiver. Your muscles are contracting because that forces them to use and make ATP and then you also make heat and that keeps you warm. So we can divide our muscles into different categories. There are three categories of muscle fiber types. So when we think about our heart contracting, that is cardiac muscle. It is distinctly different from any of the other muscle types. The muscle that I talked about that helps to move things through your digestive system or to move blood through your blood vessels, those are smooth muscles. And then the muscles that move our skeleton, they are skeletal muscles. Some people say skeletal. You know, I guess it's like tomato and tomato. I say skeletal. It's skeleton and skeletal muscle. When we look at these three types, there's different characteristics for each of those three types. So we will look at those details. The first type of muscle I want to look at is our cardiac muscle. Cardiac muscle has a very distinct structure and it is only located in the heart. Cardiac muscle has a branching structure. So some of the cells will actually branch off in this way. And in between each of the cells, we have these intercalated discs. This is only found in the heart. These intercalated discs are important. They hold the cells together very tightly. There's adherence junctions or intercellular junctions that kind of act like Velcro that hold the cells together very tightly. Those are called desmosomes. And there's also gap junction channels in between here that allow signaling molecules to pass through very quickly so that the heart muscle can function together. So when the heart contracts, many, many muscle fibers are functioning and contracting at the same time so we can efficiently pump out blood. So only the heart has this structure. The cardiac muscle has one to three nuclei. These little purple guys here are the nuclei. Nuclei are important because that is where we have our DNA and the DNA is the instructions for protein synthesis. Cardiac muscle is controlled by the autonomic nervous system. So it is involuntary. We can't consciously control our heart rate or the force of contraction. The cardiac muscle also has a striated appearance. So it looks striped like our skeletal muscle, which we will look at in a second. It has this banding pattern. The same kind of banding pattern happens in our cardiac muscle. And then lastly, our cardiac muscle is intermediate in that 
it contracts at an intermediate velocity. For comparison, our skeletal muscles have, we have slow twitch fibers and fast twitch fibers and intermediate fibers. Our cardiac muscle is all intermediate fibers. So it can increase its rate and force of contraction when we exercise, but it is generally always contracting at an intermediate rate. The diameter size is intermediate as well in comparison to the other two types. Our smooth muscle, these cells have one nucleus and they are small tapered cells that have this kind of a structure and they will function in groups as well. They also have gap junctions that allow signaling molecules to cross through. With smooth muscles, because they're involved in moving substances through the digestive tract or through blood vessels or through the ureters in that bring urine from the kidneys to the bladder, right? Or the fallopian tubes that carry the egg, okay? So those smooth muscles, they work in a motion called peristalsis. And so the smooth muscle cells do have to work together in groups as well. And gap junction proteins are important for that because it allows signaling molecules to pass between cell membranes. And the smooth muscles are also involuntary. So they are controlled by the autonomic nervous system. Smooth muscles are smooth because they do not have the striations. So they do not have that striped pattern that the skeletal and the cardiac muscle fibers have. Now the slow fibers, they are a slow velocity. They are like slow twitch fibers. Okay, the cardiac muscle is intermediate velocity and these ones are slow and the diameter is very small. So they do not have a very strong contractile force, but they can last a long time. They contract for long periods of time. And then lastly, we have our skeletal muscle. And these cells are very long tubular structures that have multiple nuclei. And they have this striated pattern. So the skeletal muscles are the muscles that we can voluntarily control. So they are controlled by our somatic nervous system. They are long, long cells and there's multiple nuclei because during embryonic development, multiple muscle cells will come together to form these long, long cells. And they need to have multiple nuclei so that there can be protein synthesis occurring all along the whole muscle cell. With these muscles, the velocity speed can be slow, intermediate, or fast. And different muscle types are going to have different proportions of each of those fiber types. We will look at fast and slow twitch fibers in a different video. And then lastly, the diameter of skeletal fibers can be small for the slow twitch fibers, intermediate for intermediate, and then large fibers for the fast twitch fibers. So here is a summary chart of the three types of muscle fibers. Now we're going to look at the structure of a muscle. And when we look at the muscle cell, that is also called a muscle fiber. And there's a couple of terms. Whenever we are talking about muscles, we often use the word myo or sarco. So in a cell that we've talked about before, the fatty outer covering is called a plasma membrane. In muscles, we call it a sarcolemma. So sarco and myo are terms that go along with muscles. A couple of things that I want to point out about muscle cells. They do not go through cell division. So mitosis does not occur in muscle cells. We have stem cells that can be stimulated to grow into new muscle fibers but there's no mitosis. We can stimulate these stem cells either because of an injury or because of training. When you exercise, you can stimulate the production of stem cells developing into new muscle cells. The other thing about growing muscle size, because we don't have cell division and there actually isn't a huge amount of converting stem cells into muscle cells. The primary reason why muscle cells get bigger, which is called hypertrophy, is because the muscle fibers inside the muscles get bigger.
So we make our muscle cells bigger. And that also depends on how you train and which muscle fibers you're going to target. So the fast twitch muscle fibers can get much bigger than your slow twitch muscle fibers. So let's have a look at our muscle structure. In this diagram, we can see that we have a bone. The bone is covered by a connective tissue covering called the periosteum. And the muscle is connected to the bone by a connective tissue called a tendon. How these tendons form is actually because of the combined layering of a few layers of connective tissue. So surrounding the whole muscle cell, we have what we call the epimyceum. Epi means outermost, like the outermost layer of your skin is the epidermis. So the epimyceum covers the muscle tissue. And this is different from fascia. Fascia is a cool substance. And actually, I'm gonna show you what that looks like with this piece of chicken. So see how the outside of the chicken, this is our skin. And then when you peel the skin away from the muscle, you can see this substance, this white connective tissue substance that is connecting the skin to the muscle. That stuff that is coming away, that's the fascia. And then this stuff that is not coming away, that's covering the muscle tissue, that is the epimyceum. And then if I pull it away a little bit further, you can see this very dense, hard connective tissue, that is the tendon. So the whole muscle is covered by the epimyceum. And now inside of our muscle, you can see that it is made up of bundles. These bundles are called fascicles. We can actually see fascicles. So when you take a piece of meat and you sort of shred it and you see how it's all stringy, all of those stringy strands are fascicles. So you can see those. If we go down now deeper into the fascicle, now that is composed of bundles of muscle cells or muscle fibers. So the fascicles are covered by perimyceum. This is the intermediate layer of connective tissue that will blend in and form the tendon. So these fascicles are then composed of muscle cells. Each muscle cell is called a muscle fiber. Each muscle cell is also covered by a connective tissue layer and that is endomyceum. So there's three layers. Innermost is endo, meaning inside. Then the perimyceum surrounds the fascicles and then the epimyceum surrounds the whole outer part of the muscle. And those three combine to form the tendons that connect the muscle to the bone. So let's zoom in a little bit on this section. Our stringy meat fascicles that we can see are composed of cells. Each muscle cell is also composed of bundles. Each of these bundles inside of the muscle cell, these are the contractile units and we call them myofibrils. When we look at the video of how muscles contract, we are going to zoom into the myofibril and look at each individual filament and see how those proteins connect to cause contraction. The muscle cells are surrounded by blood vessels so that they can bring oxygen and nutrients to the muscle cells. There's multiple nuclei in each muscle cell and the membrane that is covering the muscle cell that is underneath the endomyceum is called the sarcolemma. The fluid inside of the cell, instead of being the cytoplasm, we call it the sarcoplasm. And inside the muscle cell, that sarcoplasm contains all the same kinds of things as cells we've talked about in other videos. So there's going to be mitochondria that make ATP. We will have rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum for making proteins and fats. The, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum in muscles has another extra cool function though. 
and there are ribosomes for protein synthesis on the ER and free in the cytoplasm. So all of the normal cell structures that we've talked about before are found inside of the muscle cell. It's just now we also have this added structure of all of these protein filaments that are forming these myofibril bundles. And then they are the units that are going to cause muscle contraction.